Well, one of the things that really grabbed my attention in this book was Sean Connery, who's passed away fairly recently, one of my favorite actors. Great. Uh, you point out in your book that this guy was a powerhouse in Power. Scotland. He didn't talk a lot, but when he spoke, people listened. You had an experience with that, and you mentioned it in the book. What was that? So I never met him, but I was doing a big project in Scotland and magnificent on almost 2,000 acres, and uh, they were dunes that were essentially landmarked. You couldn't touch them. You couldn't even walk on them. They were sacred dunes. And I came in, I wanted to build this unbelievable golf course on those dunes, at the base of the dunes, and it's among the biggest dunes in the world, and they were very protected environmentally. And I was, you know, going through it, and it was really a rough zone. I never thought. I, I was always good at getting zoning. And all of a sudden, and I was having a hard time here, and it was years, you know, years, a lot of money, environmental reports, impact statements. And all of a sudden, and I didn't know Sean Connery. I met him once quickly, but I didn't know him. But he was from Scotland. And, you know, different kind of a guy. Tough guy, actually. And he said, let the damn Americans spend money in Scotland. Let him have his golf course. Let him have fun and let him put people to work. Let the bloke, let him do what he wants to do. Don't be stupid. That was it. I didn't think it. As soon as he said that, it was like. It's amazing. It was everything changed. So then, because of that, I got to know him a little bit. I, I said, that's really unbelievable. You have to see headlines in every paper in Scotland. Sean Connery says, let him do it. And that was like uh, God coming down and saying, you know, Scotland, uh, let him do it. And everything opened up. It was incredible. And I said, Sean, uh, you ever think about getting into politics? But he got. Uh, pretty sick after that. He wasn't, he wasn't a young guy when that happened. It wasn't that long ago. But I really appreciated it. I thought it was amazing, actually. It's an interesting story. Just a word. He had tremendous power in Scotland and, you know, in different places. But in Scotland, it was pretty amazing to watch it. Good guy. Tough guy. You're a New York man, or at least you were. So you had to deal with a lot of politicians in New York. You have several other letters in here. Chuck Schumer. Who really thanked you for making the first contribution to his campaign years and years and years ago? The Cuomos, and those letters are in here too. Mm -hmm. Mario Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo, what was your relationship with them like? So, uh, a couple of things. First of all, Chuck Schumer, I gave him, you know, New York is largely Democrat, although you never know because of the way the voting systems are. You never know. You may be surprised. But I gave him his first contribution. I was in Brooklyn at an office that I had with my father in Brooklyn. And he was running for the state assembly, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right out of law school. And I gave him a contribution. I think it was $500. I think it was the first check he ever gave. Now, he used to say, he used to brag about it. Now he doesn't want to talk about it so much, but that's okay. But I gave him. And I got along with him very good. Look, he's a smart guy. I got along with him really good until I ran for office. You know, I'm running as a Republican and uh, got nasty after that. Uh, with the Cuomo family, I knew Mario very well. I helped him. I supported him. Uh, I had an out because I found him not to be a very loyal person. I just didn't, you know, I just didn't think he was... Uh, uh, some people said he was a good speaker, and some people said he wasn't a good speaker. You know, the sun will rise tomorrow, all of that. I don't know. But I had a falling out with Mario. Uh, not during his time. It was afterwards. It was sort of afterwards. Uh, with Andrew. What about the pandemic, how he handled that? It seemed to me he would praise you one day and then attack you the next. Well, he was a, a guy that would one day he'd say, thank you very much. I sent the ship. I rebuilt the Javits Center. I did all of that. And then they didn't use it to the extent they should have. And if they would have put the people in there instead of putting them back in nursing homes where everybody got infected, you would have had a much different story in New York. But, yeah, he'd say, uh, I mean, I have letters from him that you have done the greatest job of anybody, and I did. I'm, I let the governors run their states. And we had some governors that did a fantastic job. South Carolina, Tennessee, South Dakota. We had, we had governors that did a fantastic job, and I let them do it. If they wanted to keep their state open, I said, keep it open. If they wanted to close it, I said, you close it. Uh, numerous Republican governors kept their states open. 
And frankly, the numbers were better than if you closed. You know, it's sort of an amazing thing. You think if you close it and seal it, but they were sealing it. People that weren't even leaving their apartments were catching COVID. I mean, you know, explain that one. Uh, so the Democrats had a pretty lousy run with that, if you look at, you know, what happened. But uh, we did a fantastic job. The ventilators, uh, the equipment I got, bringing the hospital. As an example, I got the hospital boat, the great hospital boat. I brought it into New York. It was fully equipped for COVID. We rebuilt the Javits Center. It was like a hospital. And I did that in Louisiana. I did that in many states. In Chicago, I did. We built the most beautiful facilities. Uh, GSA worked with us, and uh, the Army Corps of Engineers worked with us. They were unbelievable. The Army Corps of Engineers was able to build hospitals in three days. I mean, 